What's up guys? I'm uh, coming to y'all from a different location tonight, just on my front porch. And uh, we're gonna do a little different lesson tonight. We're gonna just do a little quick look at some verses in James about prayer. Uh, Austin's been doing a lot of preaching and or we just got through with a series on prayer. And so we're just gonna kind of look at it real quick and just kind of show you some things. Uh, Axel's here with us. Axel, say hello. Say hello, Axel. He's also known as a uh, big head Fred around here. That's what Jaylee calls him. So anyways, <clears throat> I hope everybody's doing well. I'm gonna pray for us and then we will get started. All right, dear God, thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for just uh, allowing us to be able to get into your word and to learn more about you, Lord. I thank you for this word and I, I thank you for our ability to pray. I thank you for just that opportunity we have to be able to come directly to you, Lord. Uh, I, know, I know that I take that for granted from time to time, and I pray that you forgive me for that, Lord. And I pray that you just help all of us to uh, have a better relationship and communication line with you, Lord, through, through prayer. Uh, again, I just thank you for your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, so we're going to look at James chapter 5. And we're going to read verses 13 through 18. All right, and it says... Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Elijah was a human as we are, and yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, no, none fell for three and a half years. Then, when he prayed again, the sky sent down rain and the earth began to yield its crops. Okay, so in those verses, uh, we see the word pray or prayer seven times uh, in those five verses. Okay, and so in verse 13, when it starts, it basically is telling us to pray in any situation. Okay, uh, it said, are you suffering? You should pray. Are you happy? You should pray. Are you sick? You should pray. Uh, have you sinned? You should pray. Okay, so it's basically telling us that no matter what scenario we're in, what situation we're in, whether we're, you know, or as they say, on a mountaintop or in a valley, whatever, whichever, wherever we're at in life, we should be praying, whether that's a time when we need strength and encouragement from God or when it's a time when we should be praising him for the blessings that, and the, you know, the great situation we're in at that time. All right, then you move on in the next verses, in uh, verses 14 and 15. And in those verses, um, you know, that's what it talked about, calling on the elders to pray for you. Uh, basically, we see that we are not alone. As Christians or people, we are not alone. And we should be able to count on each other to pray for each other. And we should be pray. We should be in turn, if we're counting on other people to pray for us, we should be in turn praying for them. Okay. And then we move on to <clears throat> the last section there, uh, 16 through 18. And I'm gonna read that 16 again. It says, "Confess your sins to each other. Confess your sins to each other, and pray for each other so that you may be healed." The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. All right, the, the most powerful resource we have as Christians is prayer. That's our most powerful thing that we can do. And uh, the results, a lot of times, are a lot greater than what we expect them to be. Um, we sometimes, we we minimize the power of God when we pray. We we expect, you know, we kind of hope for one thing when in reality, God, if he wills it, can do something way beyond those expectations. All right, so when you pray, you know, pray with faith and expects, expect big things, okay? Um, because a lot of times the results are greater than what we expect. Um, the next thing we see as we realize here that we can take from these verses is that, the, is that prayer should not be a last resort. It should be the first thing that we do. A lot of times, 
we wait until we've tried to handle a situation or things have gotten really bad and then we think, oh man, I, I need God, please just help me in this situation. But really and truthfully, we should be doing it the opposite way. We should be praying for things and praying about things and praying to God before it's just our last resort, before things are bad or dire or we think, you know, we... A lot of times, a lot of us are guilty of trying to handle things on our own without first just going to God in prayer, all right? Um, and the reason we should be doing that is because God's plan for us is infinitely greater than what our plan is. You know, sometimes we don't think that. You know, sometimes maybe we have, you know, we've lost family members or uh, maybe we're in a bad situation. Maybe our parents are not very good parents. Uh, maybe we have a lot of problems with our family, whatever it may be. Sometimes it's hard for us to see that, but God is God is in control, and His plans for us are are greater than what we could ever imagine. All right. Um, so because of that, it because God's in control, and and it, when we see here the power, you know, we see Elijah, even though he was a human, he just he was just a, just like us. He, prayer was so powerful that he. God stopped it from raining for three and a half years when Elijah asked him to. Then when he prayed again for its rain, he did it. All right. So um, it makes total sense for us to rely on prayer because it's so powerful. And also because of the fact that God encourages us to do it. All right. So if God's encouraging us to do something that is so powerful that we know we can rely on, we should be doing it. It's just that simple. A um, little update on Fuge and summer camp. Um, as of now, Fuge is still happening. Um, it has not been canceled for July yet, which is when we're scheduled. Um, if it does get canceled, there have been some talks of possibly doing a camp um, in this area, in the northeast, north, north, northeast, northwest area of Louisiana so hopefully even if fuse doesn't happen we'll still be able to do something along those lines um, if not we will at least try to take some kind of trip maybe a canoe trip maybe just some type of overnight trip where we can have some Bible studies just within our group okay so one way or the other i hope for us to be able to come together as a group and do something uh and get you know away from caster and away from distractions and be able to get into god's word one way or another all right i love y'all hope y'all are having a, a a good time and uh staying safe during this time i love y'all and we'll talk to you later